Hello, everybody. Welcome. It is Thursday for my weekly Facebook Live, and I'm going to wait till you pop on. I just got the notice that I am live. I hope you guys can hear me and see me, and I will wait just a minute for you guys to say hello. Um, anyway, as we are waiting for people to pop on, I hope you're having a fantastic day so far. I cannot believe we are already in April and it's the time is just flying by. We've already done, you know, Q1 is finished and we're on to Q2 and uh, let's see what happens with the second quarter. Um, and my birthday is coming up in a week and uh, yeah, time is going so quickly. So as I wait, hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Stephen. How are you today? Um, so we are going to wait and until a couple other people pop on and we're going to be talking about sales tax. How exciting. <clears throat> um, a lot of you have questions about sales tax. <laughs> Happy birthday. It's not my birthday yet. Hi, Bridget. Oh, I'm so glad you made it. Thank you for coming. Is it Brigitte or is it Bridget? <laughs> whatever it sounds good either way thank you for joining us um, I hope you're having a fantastic day guys I'm going to start with a quote for the day and this is very apropos for anyone who is in business it is if the plan doesn't work change the plan not the goal and this is from an unknown person but I love this and I picked this today because being in business means that you're going to be changing your plan quite a lot, quite often. And if you are a, both work, okay. Um, and if you are a new business owner, especially, it might seem like you have to go straight up in the direction of like a mountaintop, but business does not work that way. Business goes up, down, around corners, down in the ditch, up at the mountaintop, so this is totally normal, and I love to um, inspire all of you guys to understand that it's normal when you have these ups and downs in business. But um, so yes, change the plan. If the plan doesn't work, change the plan, not the goal. Remember, our ultimate goal is to be in business for ourselves, to create financial freedom, to also um, do what you love, do what you were born to do, and, um, you know, that's really what our goal is as entrepreneurs. And uh, whether you are a tiny, tiny business just starting out, or if you have hundreds and hundreds of employees, it is great to be self-employed. And there's so many, so many wonderful perks. Okay, so now that a few of you are on, I'm going to go ahead and welcome if you're watching on YouTube. I'm sure some of you will be watching this later. But today I want to talk about um, sales tax in the marketplace. Specifically, um, we're going to be talking about Etsy, but this applies to, um, hi, Sheila, welcome, glad to have you. Uh, so yes, we're going to be talking about sales tax, and there are, it, it can be crazy because you hear so many different things on the internet about sales tax when you are a business and you are doing an online business. So let me set the record straight. First of all, disclaimer. I do have an accounting degree, although I am not a practicing CPA, that you do need to do your own diligence when it comes to sales tax because there are different laws in every state at the state level and at the local level. So it's your responsibility to obviously go do your due diligence. And this is just an overview so you can understand kind of how the tax stuff works online. So that being said, um, Let's start off with, first of all, sales tax. What exactly is it and why and, and when do we need to start collecting it? And again, we're, we're talking about our Etsy shops, but if you have any online business, this is for you. So sales tax is just a pass through tax. So you are not keeping that money, you're collecting it from your customers and then remitting it to the state. So it passes through you. So when do you need to actually start collecting sales tax? Well, the question is, are you a real business? 
Are you a hobby or are you a business? Have you determined that yet in your business? So let me explain the difference. Um, if you are seeking to earn a profit, you are considered a business, whether you're a sole proprietor, an LLC, an S corp, a corporation, whatever you are, you are obviously seeking to be in business for a profit. Now, if you are doing this as a hobby, something that you're just trying out on the side, you have to remember that, hey, Brian, welcome, welcome. Um, so if you are doing this on the side as a hobby, you're going to have to remember that you are still responsible to pay your income taxes on your sales, although sales tax you do not have to remit. Now, the difference is, again, knowing if you are an actual business or a hobby. So once you've determined, and I'm assuming that all of you guys are doing this as a business, you're either a sole, sole, bleh, sole proprietor, an LLC, or what have you. Um, so you need to determine that. So as you determine that you are in business, you need to start collecting sales tax. And that is right away, no questions asked. Um, doesn't matter how much you make. If you are a business, you need to do a few things. So let's go ahead and pave the groundwork for what you need to do. So if your state collects sales tax, does have sales tax, which actually there are five states, I think, that do not um, have sales tax, and you can remember them by the um, acronym NOMAD. It's New Hampshire, Argonne, a N O M, Montana, a uh, Alaska and Delaware. Okay, so if you're in all those states, then you need to obviously look and see what your um, tax laws are. But everyone else needs to collect and remit sales tax. So the sales tax is governed at the state level, and then you also have your local. Like for me, instance, I'm in Palm Beach County. County. So I have a, you know, my sales tax of 6%, but I have a surtax, which is collecting for our local. So that's an additional 1%. We're going to get into that. I'll explain that in just a minute. Don't worry about that right now. But what you need to do as um, business owners is, number one, you, if you haven't already, you need to go to your Department of State online and register to collect sales tax. Okay, so... It's very easy. You fill out a form. You go on to your, your uh, Department of State. Usually that's what it's called, Department of State or Department of Revenue, and file for um, to uh, collect sales tax. And most states also allow you to take that sales tax as a use tax where you can actually be tax exempt when you're purchasing your wholesale items. So in my state, it's called a sales and use tax. So I buy, um, use my sales tax uh, certificate all the time to get everything without paying tax because the tax is going to be passed on to the end, end user, remember. Okay, so now that you're at the uh, state level, now I made some notes so I don't forget what we need to um, talk about. So once you've, um, you're online, you've got your um, sales tax certificate, this, each state is different, so make sure that you understand, number one, which pro products are taxed. Uh, some products are not taxed, believe it or not. Sometimes clothing, for instance, in New Jersey, clothing is not taxed. So you need to know what products and services are taxed, okay? I don't want this to sound too confusing. It's actually, you know, pretty, you know, once you get it, it's not so confusing. I'm just throwing a lot at out at you right now because I want to keep this at 15 20 minutes but um, so number one it'll tell you what products and services are taxable number two how much tax do you need to collect and that includes a surtax for your county um, number three when and how often do you need to file your tax for me it's on the 20th it's due on the 20th of every month but each state may be different. They may have they have different laws um, for when your tax is supposed to be remitted, and the dates that the returns are due. Again, mine is on the twentieth, so you would need to pay. Make sure it is in um, right on the twentieth, and if it's on the weekend, you got to make sure you send it in on the nineteenth before the twentieth, because you will um, most of the time they allow for those couple of day you know um, lag. 
Okay, so, so far so good. Do we kind of understand what's going on with our sales tax? That we need to collect it if we're a business and that what each state is different, you need to register with your state. Now let's talk about Nexus. Um, I don't know if you know, have heard the words thrown around a lot. It's called Nexus. And Nexus simply means a, having a physical presence in your state or in any other state. And um, as small sellers, most likely you only have Nexus, which means a presence in your own state where you are shipping out. Um, so, uh, you know, if you are starting out and let's say you are just shipping from your home, then your Nexus state would be your state. For me, it would be Florida. But if I have um, employees in other states, warehouses, fulfillment, any type of physical presence, you have considered a nexus, you have a physical presence in another state, which means that you need to check out the laws for that state if you need to start collecting and remitting sales tax for where else you have a physical presence in. So let's keep it simple. Let's pretend that we, our nexus is in our own state. So you don't need to worry about right this moment unless you have, I mean, if you're a small company. Now, if you're starting to grow, Let's talk about what economic presence is, economic net nexus. So let's say you're an Etsy seller and all of a sudden you have 200 transactions. I'm in Florida, all of a sudden I get 200 transactions and like $100,000 in Texas. All of a sudden I have economic nexus in Texas because of the Wayfair Act, I don't, the Wayfair case. Um, I don't know if you've heard about that, but that is a um, Supreme, Supreme Court ruling where if, and a lot of states are jumping on the bandwagon here, if you have a large economic presence in a state, you're going to be required, you got to look into that with your account to see, um, you will have to start remitting sales tax to that state. But I don't think a lot of us now are making in one particular state, unless you're a huge, huge company, um, it's usually around 100,000 or 200 or either are 200 sales. But again, do your own diligence. Make sure you're checking with each state before and your accountant. So you do not, um, you know, you've got to abide by all of these tax laws. Okay, so let's talk about, so we got economic nexus um, covered. So let's quickly talk, and I'm sorry I talk so quickly because I like to keep these quick. Um, so let's talk about marketplace place nexus. So the marketplace, which is, you know, the third party sellers, Amazon, Etsy, eBay, any other place where they are, you are actually maybe doing business through them. And in our case, it is um, Etsy. So uh, the marketplace now, there are states that the marketplace is starting to collect and remit sales tax for us. So, um, wait, I'm just reading real quick in the comments. I have a business license and file for fictitious names. Uh, we'll talk about that in just one second. Um, so, yes, you need to, uh, the marketplace is now starting to collect in certain states. So, let's say for me, I'm in Florida. Someone purchases in, um, I don't know which state is actually collecting from the marketplace, um, but let's say it's, it's um, you know, Arizona, not Arizona, let's say it's uh, California. And um, Etsy will actually, you know, take that from my, the tax from my uh, sale, they will charge the customer, and then they will, Etsy will remit the tax. So um, there's a lot of I guess it's kind of ambiguity right now because this Wayfair thing just happened and um, a lot of people are like a little confused. So when you have to have your marketplace uh, nexus, um, just make sure that uh, you are just following the rules of what like Etsy said, like if Etsy is collecting the tax then Etsy is collecting the tax, then that's it. You don't have to worry about it. Um, so um, let me look at my notes here because I wanted to make sure I briefly went over everything. Um, okay, do you have to pay sales tax on shipping? Yes, sometimes. It depends, again, on your state. So um, 
some states do require that you have to collect sales tax on shipping. So again, this is something you need to make sure you consult with your tax advisor on. So it is so individual for each state. And that's why I want to make sure you guys understand that there is no one rule. It is governed by state and local authorities and you need to do your due diligence. So um, does that kind of give you an overview about taxes? Can I get a thumbs up if that gave you a little bit of an overview, more of an insight? We've already been going like 15 minutes. This is crazy how time goes. Um, so Bridget asks, in addition to sales tax, I was told by the tax office that I need to have a business license and file for a fictitious name. Any ideas on that one? Live in Florida and I don't have an inventory for my handing money. I make them to order only. It confused the hell out of me. Help. <laughs> okay, when you're starting out, don't don't freak out so much. Don't worry because um, everyone starts out and they're not going to come after you for just starting out your business and learning the ropes. Um, but yes, if you are a real business, you do not need to file for a fictitious name. And what a fictitious name is, it's just what you're doing business as. For example, I have a corporation. I'm an S corp. And my corporation name is Granero Production and Design. It's my umbrella company for many different businesses. And I do business as one of my businesses, Oh My Ba. That's my fictitious name. It's not incorporated. That's different. A fictitious name is so you can collect payments. You can put things on your invoice. People will know, notice that you are a real company. And that's the difference between filing for a fictitious name. And it's not a big deal. You just file something online. So you would put the name of your actual business. If you want to incorporate later, that's a whole nother process. It's costly and you do not need to do that right now. Um, and, uh, and just file and just get your business license and that, and then you're, then you're legit. So it's really not that difficult. I know it may seem to be, but don't get so confused and crazy. So I hope that answers your question, Bridget. Brigitte, I'm going to say Brigitte. Um, so uh, good. I'm so glad. Okay. So we have a couple more minutes. What else can I um, answer for you guys related to anything in business, whether it's sales tax or um Anything else? You understand now about Nexus, the Nexus where you have your physical presence. Um, you understand Marketplace Nexus, Economic ne Nexus. I hope I was thorough with all this. You're welcome, Brigitte. Um, what else? Tell me, because you got about another minute and then I'm going to run off. I'm going to be hopping over to my boutique and... Um, are you guys being productive though? Brian, have you gotten your shop up again? Are you getting it up and running? I wanna hear a yes, I'm working on it. Sheila, are you getting your shop? Are you adding your products? I, I checked up on you the other day. I see you're up to 27. Hi Alana, we're about to like, you're gonna have to watch the, the uh, replay because we're, I keep these Facebooks only about 15 to 20 minutes for time's sake. You guys are super busy. I'm busy and I like to pack a lot of information into 15 minutes. So that's why I do these. So make sure when I do these, you guys are here. If you can try to be here right around one o'clock because I'm going to pack all the information in. Um, anything else before we, we uh, conclude today? Let me make sure I made all my notes. Oh, yes. Um, listen, if you want some great information, go to taxjar.com. There is a boatload of information, and even by state, it will really help you out. You don't even have to sign up for TaxJar. Um, but tax jar will give you a lot of current information and you don't have to go pay and ask your accountant because I know that they could charge a lot. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's a really good resource. And you, I even think you can click on the state and it'll tell you certain laws by state. So that's just a little, um, something good. So Brigitte is knitting like crazy, selling like crazy on Amazon handmade. Awesome. You know what, Brigitte, maybe I'm going to have you on as a guest. I'd love to talk to you about 
um, the Amazon handmade business because although I am on Amazon FBA, I do not, I'm on the regular marketplace. I have not um, yet gotten on um, to Amazon handmade, but I would love to hear more about that. So if any, any of you all want to hear about Amazon handmade, just give me a thumbs up. Maybe we can do a little, um, I don't know, maybe a little uh, Skype call. Anyway, here's my phone. Okay, guys, I am going to uh, skedaddle out of here and um, hope this was helpful. And let me know if you have any uh, requests for next week. And you can always contact me. And I'll see you guys in the next training. Ciao, ciao.